We are going to talk about mainstreaming environment and social impact into developmental initiatives in Lagos State. So basically, I will start by using this illustration. He said, don't be a watermelon organization. A lot of people, a lot of companies, a lot of individuals, most of the projects we carry out are not done basically by us, but by proponents who apply to who apply to our MDAs for these projects. And they want to claim, ah, yeah, our project is sustainable, we are carrying environment along. Most of them are basically doing what we call greenwashing. They are just basically doing it for their corporate image, but not really to sustain the environment. So we say they are like greening outside, which is watermelon, which is green outside, but it is what? Red inside. If our forefathers decided to wake up today and they decided to come back to Lagos, what would they see? This is Abu Dhabi in 1970, and this is Abu Dhabi now. This is Lagos in 1970, this is Lagos now. The two parents, if they decided to wake up, which one would be happy? The one in Abu Dhabi or the one in, in Lagos? Most of our parents are telling us that Lagos of early 70s or early 80s, it's more beautiful and more nicer, a clean environment than Lagos of, of today. So what do we mean? Are we developing in terms of environment or we are what? Going back. So if Tunubu Square in 1970 can be as beautiful as this, and you all know, we, if you go to Lagos Island, if you go to Tunubu Square today, were you able to recognize the square? No. It has been crowded by a lot of what? Activities. Socrates said in the early 15th century, said, let who, who want to move the world first complete an environmental impact assessment and in 90 days public comment. Which means EIA has been with us for years, for centuries. So why are we just hearing it now? If a philosopher says, let people be involved in a project, gather people's comments, gather people's opinion before you carry out your project. Do and hear it before you do anything. Why are we not doing that? What is this buzz about ESIA? What do you mean by ESIA? Our environment, they always want to stop us. They want to stop our project. Is it because just for us to do EIA, let's just do this EIA for them and just go, no. It is not just do this EIA. It is doing the EIA and doing it properly. In a layman's language, without going academic, EIA is you trying to predict and identify the likely impacts that may arise from a project you are proposing to embark on before you start the project. And so EIA is actually a pre-project process where you take your proposed project through a process where you are able to identify what are the likely consequences or likely impacts of that project, one on environment, two on human health, and three on the socioeconomic activities within that environment. And so you do that before the project commences. And so that is why for us in the Mission Environment, when a project has been implemented, and you are talking about EIA, we tell you there's already a violation. Because EIA must be before a project is co uh, commences. And the idea is that, so when you take the findings of that EIA study, you can incorporate it into your design to be able to either avoid some impacts or to reduce some impact. The cost of doing the right thing is cheaper than the cost of remediating or correcting the consequences of refusal to do that. This is why, as a ministry, we have committed ourselves to creating awareness on the need for participation and compliance with the EIA process in the state. To this end, we have developed the citizen guide on EIA to educate members of the public and provide them with required information on EIA process in the state. 
protecting our environment is our collective responsibility. As we strive to improve the welfare of Lagosians through implementation of the various laudable projects of this administration, we must do so in a sustainable manner. So I want to advise that um, at every stage, particularly at the conceptual stage of a design for a project, the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Environment should be carried along and their input at that point must you know, be taken into consideration. I think Ministry of Environment needs to help all the other ministries, essentially project uh, implementing ministries, to guide them as a framework. You are building a road, these are likely kind of studies you have to do, such that if you even engage a consultant, all these things will be reflected in your whatever analysis of studies you have conducted. The impact on some of these things we've talked about, like projects, like the environment and all the rest. There's something the first lecturer said that really touched me. Now, people are building up estates around the refinery. I just heard now, for the first time in my life, that uh, <laughs> refinery, the people, uh, human beings living around the refinery is cancer. <laughs> I, I can imagine. I want. Ministry of Environment to do more than what we are doing now. To see how we can help people who are already buying houses around that area. Probably, as maybe, I'm not saying we should spoil market for the business people. But there's a way we can sensitize ourselves. Like for me now, if I have the intention of buying anything around that area now, with the little information I just gather now, I think I have to think twice or twice. We believe that the importance of environmental impact assessment cannot be overemphasized in a, in a developing country like us. And we pray, and our prayer is that lesson learned today will be taken to our various NDAs and organizations because we believe that we can achieve much when we come together to make Lagos a greater state in the nation. Thank you, and God bless you.